Okay, Jameson is eating a vegan hamburger and I'm going to try to walk through the quotations that I would have walked through in the last 10 minutes of class. You've been allowed to have the last 10 minutes of class. A lot of these issues came up already um, <clears throat> just in your questions and discussions, so some of this might be repetitive. Um, and I'm gonna try to walk through Oops, that's me pushing a button. <clears throat> Try to walk through some of the different um, things that I've got underlined and circled. And on page 462, he gives us his five um, propositions. The first is that to insist on the designing intellect as a cause of a poem is not to grant the design or intention as a standard by which to judge so that the poet is obviously the cause of, but that doesn't mean the, that's the same standard by which we should judge. Okay, second, how is he, we, to find out what the poet tried to do? If the poet succeeded in doing it, then the poem itself shows what he was trying to do, and if the poet did not succeed, then the poem is not adequate evidence, and the critic must go outside the poem. This is like my omelet example. If it worked, then you don't need to explain what you were trying to do. Three, judging, oh wait, that, this is my omelet example. Judging a poem is like judging a pudding or a machine. One demands that it work. Four, we ought to impute the thoughts and attitudes of the poem immediately to the dramatic speaker. And we didn't talk about this, but when we read prose, we say that it's a narrator who's speaking to us, not the author. And when we, just, when we talk about poetry, we say that it's a speaker who's speaking to us, not the poet, because we wanna differentiate what's internal to the poem or the fiction or the narrative fiction um, from what's external to it, like the actual poet or the actual author. So we use narrator or speaker instead. Um, there's a sense in which, this is five, there's in, in sense, in sense, sense in which an author by revision may better achieve his original intentions, he just then meant to write a better work. If you revise it and it does better what you meant to do, then you've just written a different poem that you like better. And maybe we will like it better also. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip ahead. Um, at the top on the left hand side of 462, they talk about objective criticism and artistic criticism, um, criticism of the poem, not just as whether it's saying something that we, a lesson that we all need to learn, for example, or um, whether or not the writer knew all of the um, clues for how to write a poem, but we judge it based on whether it comes up with organic, some sort of organic unity that makes the poem work. Not, and this is like what a lot of the 19th century writers were doing based on whether it gives us a good moral or a good lesson. Okay. Um, somewhere in here, <clears throat> Chi was talking about before we were very rudely interrupted, um, the fact that the author's intentions aren't available in part because the author's intent, author might have changed his mind. You, you notice we're still saying he because that's who was writing poems that get read by Wimsant and Beardsley. Um, he might have started writing about one thing and then changed his mind, or he might not even have thought that much about what his intentions were, or he might have forgotten. So when you ask in retrospect what he meant, it's not even like the poet's intentions, if you ask him, are available. Okay, I'm not sure that that's attached to a quotation in here, but it's a really important point. Um, similar to, and here I am at the top right-hand side of 464, 
the difference between being a poet and being a critic, which isn't to say you can't be both. It's just to say that they are separate things, that the poet isn't necessarily a critic and isn't necessarily a better critic of his own work than I am, for example. Um, okay, we talked about internal, external, and intermediate evidence. Um, we talked about how you can look up words or context or allusions um, and how the poem works maybe even more interestingly if you get that stuff, but that it should work anyway. Um, and then we end up where I think it was um, Jasmine who said this, that she liked it also, but I like it too, that critical inquiries unlike Beth's are not settled in this way. Critical inquiries are not settled by consulting the oracle. Um, you would consult the poem, they would say. And then we didn't talk about it, but I talked about it in my other video, how the heresy of the paraphrase is an important idea in um, new criticism, that you can't paraphrase a poem because form and content work together. And Wimsatt and Beardsley give us a good example of how that goes. I also just want to say that your text messages at the end of this sort of debacle were very moving to me personally. Um, it turns out that when men get caught parenting when they're teaching, their evaluations go way up. And when women get caught parenting, their evaluations go way down. And the fact that you're so supportive of me in this like weird environment where no one else can like enter our isolation pod to help me like keep him entertained is extremely like tears to the eyes meaningful. So thank you very much for that. Tons.